Oh my goodness, it's been a long time. Finally, we have an electric supercar that is actually good. That is actually going to be a global car that isn't insanely heavy like BYD's insane 6,000 pound supercar. This thing is legit, guys. I saw this vehicle or a version, sort of a variant of this supercar at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. It crashed because it had too much power. I mean, literally 2,000 horsepower. Yeah, that's too much. The, the traction control system couldn't handle it. This thing just drove itself off the road like like an insane beast a beast from hell I literally literally the thing is crazy 2000 horsepower just imagine that now at the time I made a video and I was like you know what guys you don't need this much power you know bring it down to a thousand horsepower that's still an insane amount make it lighter and then I think people will love it it'll be it'll be a brilliant vehicle and that's exactly what they actually did now clearly I had no part in that decision whatsoever I'm not trying to claim that I did but it's kind of awesome that this vehicle is actually finally, this kind of vehicle is going to come to market. Because all the criticism of EVs, EVs, they're too heavy, they're too heavy, they're too heavy. Who cares about the power? They're just too heavy. Well, all of those are coming to an end. We're starting to see lighter and lighter weight EVs. And now we're seeing lightweight EV supercars, which could be fairly affordably priced considering where it's being manufactured. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you. Now, speaking of where it's being manufactured, these vehicles, I believe, are actually made in a factory not far away from the factory where the vehicle I've just ordered is being made. Xpeng G6. I'm sure most of you know that I've ordered one, and it's actually coming tomorrow, I think, on a truck. So, what's it? It's t today's Thursday. Actually, it might be coming today. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, I better get to bed, right? It's um, it's one o'clock in the morning. In fact, 1.30 a.m. in the morning. The new Lotus Esprit, all right? This thing is crazy. It's a carbon bi-motor supercar, and it hits zero to 100 kilometers an hour, zero to 62 miles an hour in 2.5 seconds. Really, this is, in my opinion, the car Lotus needed to make. Now, the car that I mentioned earlier, the one that crashed, that's actually an MG they're both made in China. MG Lotus, British brands, great British brands. People still think Lotus is a British brand. It's not. It's it's owned by Geely. Now, MG is owned by Seik Motors, obviously a Chinese conglomerate, and Geely own Lotus. Now, Lotus have some cars. They're not really selling that well. They've got these EVs. They've got a, a large electric SUV and a large electric sedan. They're crazy expensive. You know, like I think about a $200,000 now, this though, this is what Lotus is about. You know, lightweight, high performance, but there's never ever been a Lotus, you know, performance vehicle that was anything like this. The all carbon 3,500 pound supercar has butterfly doors, McLaren F1 like three seat layout. It's a three seater, it's very unusual. And it has haptic prompts through the seat and the steering wheel for when you're racing. The bi-motor powertrain, it delivers 986 horsepower for a top speed of 200 miles an hour. That's at 320 kilometers an hour. It'll do 2.5 seconds, zero to 62 miles an hour in less than 2.5 seconds. To be honest, straight line speed is not what this vehicle is about. It is incredibly fast though. So how do they get it to be so light? Well, one of the reasons is the carbon fiber monocoque, and that definitely helps reduce the weight. But the other reason is that, um, well, it has a relatively small battery. Now, when I say small, it's not small, but it's not a big battery pack. It's a 70 kilowatt hour battery. It delivers 250 miles of range, 402 kilometers of range. Now, when you think about the weight of this vehicle, like I said, it's really not that heavy. It's only 1,600 kilograms, 1,600 kilograms. That's actually the lightest EV, like mainstream EV that I can think of right now that is this size. And obviously two motors, a 70 kilowatt hour battery, that's extremely lightweight. That carbon monocoque is obviously the number one reason this vehicle is so light, but also it's got very, very high energy density batteries. The carbon body helps keep the weight down. It looks lean, it looks really nice. It looks, to be honest, bigger than the Lotus Avia. Uh, although, this car actually has some incredibly cool technology. It has steer by wire. 
Now, that's what you get in the Cybertruck. So this will be the only the second car in the world other than the Cybertruck using steer by wire. It means fully digital steering, which will actually be really, really cool in a supercar because that would mean that you would be able to tune the steering for the type of racing you're doing. Well, let's say you're racing on a really tight circuit. Then you want to have really, tight, really, really sharp steering when you're you know, doing certain turns. So you can actually, you'll be able to adjust that steering digitally. Really, really cool. That's one of the best features of the Cybertruck and journalists have said that as well. Lotus says it gives drivers the ability to adjust steering ratio and feel. Um, of course, that's virtual feel, but it's, it's as real as you want to be. So what's going to appeal to light Lotus diehards about this vehicle? Potentially the fact that it has a structural battery pack and it's going to be safer than other supercars for sure. On this vehicle is the Pirelli P0 Elect tires. These actually reduce rolling resistance and increase range by 10%. Now, I've never heard of these tires before. Pirelli P0 Elect, so E-L-E-C-T tires. They're quite expensive, um, good for supercars, probably not what you want to put on your EV, but you could if you wanted to. I mean, if you bought a Tesla Model S Plaid, these would work on a car like that, something like that. Now, these tires are actually already fitted to the Lotus Elytri SUV and the Lotus EMEA four-door coupe. And one other cool feature about this vehicle is that Lotus claim that it'll have level four autonomous driving capability. Now, I don't, that would mean this car can drive itself just as well as any Tesla can in California. I don't think that's likely, to be honest. I think that's, um, in fact, that's marketing bullshit. There's no way that's going to have level four autonomous driving capability. Absolutely. Honestly, I'd be willing to bet my house that isn't true. <laughs> but. It will probably have some very good advanced driving features. Might be able to drive you around a racetrack without you doing anything. So how big is this vehicle? Well, it's 4.5 meters long, 4,490 millimeters, which is 176.8 inches. Of course, that means it's not a particularly big vehicle. Now, getting back to the driver assistance, it has actually an NVIDIA Drive Compute Platform, which Lotus claims is the stack for its Lotus Wear technology. Theory 1 has level 4 hardware capability, has four deployable LiDARs, six HD cameras, and a combination of long and short range millimeter radars, plus ultrasonic radars. Together, Lotus calls it a 360 degree autonomous driving sensor suite. Now, what is really intriguing Four LiDARs. I've never heard of any other car having four LiDARs. Why would that be necessary? Why would that work? I don't know. I just say I'm intrigued by how that would work though, because it seems like it has too many LiDARs and not enough cameras. Only six cameras. That's quite a small number for a, you know, basically what is level four driving. Six cameras. I mean, how's it seeing everywhere with only six? A lot of cars, I mean, for a Tesla, for example, for Tesla's have 11 or 12. Anyhow, that's sort of an intriguing feature. Now, we don't know the production date for this vehicle, but you know how things are in China, they get things done fast. Yeah, okay. That was a bit of a pun, of course. This is a fast car. Personally, I think this looks fantastic. It's, for me, an, the only desirable supercar that I really would love to own. I'm looking at this thing and thinking, wow, 1,600 kilograms. It's lighter than a Lamborghini Huracan with fluids, right? You gotta remember all these weights that manufacturers are giving you. They're all they're all complete load of horseshit because they're, they're, they're saying these weights without fluids in them. You, you gotta get extra extra 350 pounds, 400 pounds before you actually get the, the driving weight. So this thing is actually lighter than almost about 95% of other supercars. They're actually petrol powered or gasoline powered. It's extremely light. I think it looks sensational. It's got a thousand horsepower. Um, extremely advanced in pretty much every way. I mean, what is there not to love? Oh, that's right. It doesn't make loud farty fart noises. Thanks for watching.